Oh, you know, this is the broader discussion about safety net. Um, I want to kind of return back to the concept of the Affordable Care Act, uh, universal coverage. Um, you know, we heard uh, uh, Dr. Watts talk about, look, you know, I, as an economist, can't say whether we should or shouldn't do this. I'm just going to talk about the trade-offs that are involved. And if you're going to have uh, some sort of insurance, it would be good if you had the sense that you were in category one, according to Milton Friedman, where you were spending your own money, even if that money was given to you by your employer or the government. So, so that kind of brings us back, if I can, to David Reamer, who's going to talk to us about the Biden proposal, the Democratic Party proposal for health care and the Affordable Care Act. And I know, at least from your perspective, David, you had proposed some sort of savings account that you could purchase insurance from, and that savings account would be populated in your proposal by the government or perhaps an employer or so on. But could you talk first a little bit about what is the Democratic Party proposing, the Affordable Care Act? What are the pros and cons of that? And kind of give a perspective. But first off, what's on the table right now? Because it doesn't sound like Medicare for All is on the table anymore, although I don't keep up with these things. So, so David, you're up again. Thanks. Well, well thank you. It's good to be back. Um, I, I should say at the outset, I, I'm yet to meet an economist who hasn't told me what to do. But um, <laughs> when, when I meet one, I'll let you know. Uh, the uh, the, the starting point for understanding uh, Vice President Biden's and presumably Democratic nominee Biden's uh, proposal is, is to go back to the Affordable Care Act, uh, because essentially his proposal is to protect and build on Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, the ACA. So we, we have to understand the basic components of the Affordable Care Act to make any sense of what uh, Joe Biden is proposing. Um, the, the Affordable Care Act did essentially five big things. It's a, it's a huge bill, and uh, so there are many smaller things. But as I read it, uh, here are the, uh, the five uh, basic things that the ACA did. The, the, the first was that it significantly expanded the Medicaid program. Uh, in the, the actual legislation required that all states' Medicaid programs cover at least to 133% of the poverty line. Uh, the Supreme Court struck down that as a requirement, but the law continued to provide very strong incentives for states to do that. Um, and most states, including uh, a fair number of red states, but not Wisconsin, uh, have indeed expanded uh, Medicaid up to 133% of the poverty line. Um, that brings in very enhanced federal funding if Wisconsin were to do this, as everybody agrees, um, it, it would actually allow more people to be covered by Medicaid and reduce the state's cost for Medicaid. But uh, Governor Walker and, and the Republican legislature didn't want to do that for whatever reasons they had, uh, even though many other equally conservative and, and Republican governors and legislatures have done so. So that was one big component of the ACA, expand Medicaid. The second one had to do with a major restructuring of the individual insurance market. The, the initial uh, underpinning of that was a mandate that people have health insurance, that every person uh, have health insurance. The, the Supreme Court uh, struck that down as a mandate, but basically reinterpreted the mandate as a tax and said, well, as a tax, that's okay. Uh, Congress has, as I understand it, repealed the tax, and therefore there's a question in front of the Supreme Court as to whether or not um, this whole part of the ACA or the ACA itself should be struck down. That case is, is pending. But in the meantime, what happened for individual insurance was that um, individuals not eligible for Medicaid, not eligible for Medicare, um, not covered by their employer, could obtain a, a subsidy on a sliding scale if they went into the health insurance exchange or marketplace and bought a plan. The subsidy is larger, uh, the lower people's income, it, phase, it ends at a 400% of the poverty line. Uh, there's another provision that limits the total cost of the subsidy to I think 9.86% of, of, the, of, the, of the, the family's income. Um, and the basis for that subsidy is 
what's called the silver plan. Uh, the, the individual exchange has all these plans that cover different percentages of cost on average on an actuarial basis. The silver plan costs 70% of costs. So the subsidy and the maximum percent of how much you could spend are all kind of geared to that silver plan. The, the third thing that the ACA did was it said that employer sponsored coverage, indeed all health insurance uh, had to, that, that employers had to cover all, all their workers if they were a large enough employer, that there's a, a penalty on the employer if the employer with I think more than 50 full-time equivalent employees, I may have that number wrong, doesn't, uh, doesn't cover their workers. And, um, and then finally, uh, in, in terms of individual kinds of insurance, the ACA uh, required over time the phasing out of the so-called donut hole, the deductible in the middle of the Medicaid Part D prescription drug benefit that basically said the benefit at first covers your drugs and it stops covering them all together for several thousands of dollars and then it picks up uh, the cost of the drugs, a large part of that later. That middle bit where the benefit doesn't uh, cover at all uh, is, is shrinking, shrinking, so-called donut holes being shrunk away. And then the final point is that all insurance plans have to provide essential health benefits, um, uh, preventive care, uh, there's no cost sharing allowed, um, pre-existing conditions are not uh, permitted as a basis for denying coverage or charging more. And um, so, uh, so that's the, th those are the major components of the Affordable Care Act. What Vice President Biden has proposed on his website is to do the following. Uh, first of all, um, people who are not covered by Medicaid in a state that could fully cover them would be given what's called a premium free access to the public option to, to basically to go into Medicare or something like it. Uh, he also proposes with respect to Medicaid, a system of automatically enrolling people so that it's, it's, it, people have to figure out that they're eligible and apply. It's just, it would be a system of automatically enrolling them as they interact with schools or other institutions or programs that involve low income people. So it would increase the number of enrollees in Medicaid just by making it easier for less, less people less attuned to the, the program to, to get covered. And then it also would um, provide an option for people where the state hasn't fully expanded Medicaid. For, with respect to individual insurance, what, what Biden is proposing is to make it less expensive for people to go into that exchange and get individual insurance. So. The subsidies are um, available. They don't stop at 400% of poverty. They could go above that. They're based on the gold plan that covers 80% of benefits rather than the silver plan, which means that the subsidy is, is higher. And then the, the total amount of the out of pocket that a family has to pay for subsidies is reduced from 9.86% of income to 8.5%. So, all of these changes are relatively small, but what they add up together is getting more people covered uh, and or lowering the cost of coverage. Uh, people in um, employer-sponsored insurance would have the option also of uh, joining the so-called uh, public option like Medicare. Um, Medicare itself, uh, there would be, um, uh, it would be empowered to negotiate prescription drug prices uh, with drug companies, which is, has been prohibited uh, in, in this administration. And then there's some general uh, rules that apply to the entire insurance sector. So for example, surprise billing would not be allowed. Uh, the government would, he's pledging that if he were president, the government would more aggressively use antitrust laws to increase competition. Um, So-called launch prices for drugs that face no competition would be limited. And um, there's other, other provisions related to uh, the prescription drugs. So what, what Biden basically has done is said, um, Obamacare is good, uh, but we can improve it here, there, with respect to Medicaid, with respect to the health insurance exchanges, provision of individual coverage options, with respect to employer-sponsored coverage, there would be the public option fallback. Um, Medicare itself would be, you know, it would be sort of, uh, not so much expanded in terms of whom it covers, but an effort to control the cost 
and there'd be general consumer uh, strengthening of, of what he defines as consumer protections. So you could think of what Biden is proposing essentially as Obamacare plus, um, not quite on steroids because it doesn't dramatically change it, but it would, uh, it would, it would, it, it would remove the federal government obviously from attacking the constitutionality of Obamacare. The new attorney general would, I assume, withdraw from all the cases challenging the legality of the program. They would start defending it instead, and there would be these, you know, smaller to to modest changes in the program. But the basic model of health insurance in the United States would remain the same. It would have these four major components, Medicaid, individual insurance, employer-sponsored insurance, and Medicare. Uh, it, it doesn't do what Bernie Sanders and others have said, Medicare for all. It keeps insurance. It still relies on competition as a mechanism for controlling costs, not the kind of uh, what I would call better competition model that I talked about earlier with Young Medicare, but nonetheless, it basically assumes the validity of uh, the private market for uh, the way of designing plans for um, individuals and for employers. And it keeps Medicare Advantage, which is the Medicare program's turn to using competition among private uh, HMOs, essentially, Mm -hmm. uh, as an option to the more traditional uh, Medicare way of covering people. So I hope that's clear um, because what Biden is proposing is taking the rather complex structure we have as modified by the ACA and then modifying right. it further. It's a little sure. bit to sort of get your arms around the totality of it, but I, I hope that summary was reasonably uh, clear. No, oh, that's helpful. And I guess we don't have a lot of time, but I'm kind of curious about the distinctions between your plan, which frankly I understood a little bit better and, and, and what you just described, but more in terms of how how he uh, achieves the universal coverage. Is it through the sort of the, the introduction of the public option? Um, and that is, but you still have competition uh, amongst private insurance, right? So for the different levels, so... What, what, what Biden has done, he, he, he basically is saying, if you add up all of the impacts, his estimate, based I assume on, on some you know, independent analysis, I'm not sure, he says that the totality of what he's proposing would result in 97% of Americans being covered compared mm -hmm. to, we were around 90% or 89% now, it's probably gone up more because of what was talked about earlier, individuals during this pandemic losing employer-sponsored coverage um, and not being able to get alternative coverage. So we're probably, you know, we're probably around uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 percent uninsured now. He would drive that down, he says, to, to around 3 percent. So the, you know, that, that is one of the virtues of his proposal, if, if, if those numbers are true, there would be, again, a big reduction in the number of, of uninsured, big increase in the number of covered people. The, the question is whether, to me, the biggest question about it is, can you by, I don't wanna say tinkering, but by making these changes, some small, some bigger, with the current arrangement that we have, the, the regime of ACA, will that be effective enough mm -hmm. in controlling healthcare costs? And in also dealing with some of the frustrations people experience as they move from one plan to another. They move from Medicaid to employer-sponsored coverage, then they lose that, then they have to apply for the exchange or reapply for Medicaid. There's a lot of people that slip through those uh, sort of transition periods. And if, if that's the time when your car gets totaled and you're in it and you're, or, or you get a dread disease and you're not covered, that's, that's a problem for you. Right. Um, my, my, my proposal would, would not only result in 97% plus coverage, uh, at least for people who are legally present, but it would solve this problem of being bounced around from type of coverage to type of coverage uh, with only one transition for most people, which is when you turn 65 and go on Medicare. Um, under my proposal, people would have health insurance because they are Americans under 65 and yeah. it wouldn't matter what their poverty is there would be no means test. They wouldn't have to show how poor they were to get help. They wouldn't have to be covered by an employer. 
Uh, they could actually quit a job to go off and, you know, found the next uh, uh, Apple computers or whatever without worrying about th th themselves and their families losing health insurance. Well, it is so, the other downside of having insurance tethered to your employer as it makes it hard to be an entrepreneur and leave your jobs. <laughs> right. And, and going back to the earlier discussion with, uh, with Kurt Gilo and, and John Richards, when we were working on, on these proposals, that was one thing we heard a lot. A lot of people would come up to us when we would explain this and they would kind of almost furtively look around the room to make sure no one from their employer was there and then whisper to us, well, the only reason why I'm keeping my job is because of the health insurance. What I really yeah. want to do is quit this job, start off on my own, be an entrepreneur. I'm willing to sacrifice my pension. They were often willing to give up their own health insurance, but they weren't yeah. willing to give it up right. for a spouse, a partner, or their children. And so people, there was a name for it. We called it job lock. People yeah. were locked into jobs they didn't want to be in because they had to get insurance through their employer. Right. Um, the, the ACA has improved that, but not solved the problem entirely. Um, there, there's a certain point where the subsidies end or they become so small and, and then what's available to you in the unsubsidized market is totally unaffordable. So you, your only choice is to be poor enough to get on Medicaid, be old enough to be on Medicare or stay with your employer or find an employer. Yeah. So that, that's a real problem for the competitiveness of American uh, uh, private sector in, 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 our, in the countries we compete with, whatever problems they have, and I'm sure that you and others would identify those, they don't have the problem as much, at least of job lock. Yeah, well, that's a good note to end on because I'm passionate about supporting entrepreneurs and anything we can do to, to help that. And this is one of the benefits of, of some sort of universal care. So right. thanks, David. Um, I appreciate you covering the Democratic platform. Um, we couldn't get Joe himself. The DNC was going to be in Milwaukee, and that's all changed, and so that made it complicated. But you are uh, a, a wonderful representative, uh, and I appreciate you doing that, David. So.